happens. Okay, ready? Here ready. We, here we go. Hello, everyone. It's Jacqueline from Homeworks, etc. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we are doing our first live on YouTube. Super excited. Um, just going to wait a few seconds for people to tune in here. Log in. <clears throat> We're at uh, Homeworks, et cetera, today. We're in the shop. So if there are any interruptions with customers coming in, um, we're just gonna go with the flow here. We've got Aaron behind the camera. How are we doing, Aaron? It's all great. good? Yep, great. Fantastic. Uh, so we're doing a live demonstration today on our signature wood sign making. So um, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Every Thursday, we're gonna be doing a new DIY project for the home. Um, we'd love to do workshops here and our signature sign making workshop is something that we've done with hundreds of people successfully. And so this really simple, easy process of making wood signs, um, I know you can tackle too. So if you've ever been interested in making wood signs, but you've just never known how to do it, or you are um, someone who are an avid sign maker, but always wondering um, what other tips and tricks that you can learn, um, here's a perfect opportunity for you guys to just join in and view. And um, if you stay to the very end of this video, uh, there will be a free downloadable um, instruction sheet that you can print off uh, for you to use for your next sign making DIY. So again, even if you don't feel like you're creative, I know this is a project that you're gonna be able to tackle successfully too. Um, so we'll just get started here. Um, so you don't need a lot of um, supplies. We have wood, um, we're using pine. Oh, we're using pine today. Uh, it's a three and a half inch by 16 inch board. Super, super um, easy, you can get this at a hardware store. And we just cut this down to length. Um, I do pre-sand everything. Uh, with uh, 120 grit sandpaper, so it's super smooth to the touch, um, especially on the end grain as well. And you can do this on any size wood, really. And then we have our stencils. Everything we do is with stencils, uh, which is super fantastic because you don't have to worry about hand painting or if your lettering is gonna be good. Um, we have our stencils that we make in-house here and some super fun ones, um, relax, great for the bathroom, uh, home, we've got coffee makes things possible. And if you're a mom, this might apply for you. Um, and friends, which is a great gift that you can make a sign for a friend, for a birthday. Uh, so there's something for everyone here. I can, um, you can see all the quotes that we have online as well. So you can head to our website at homeworksetc.ca uh, to shop and to see some of the other designs that we offer. But today I thought we would do a, this is our happy place. Um, this is a new sign that um, we're going to be doing on a boxwood wreath uh, for our front door. So I thought we would just do a sample today of that. Um, so our stencils, vinyl stencils, are pine wood. We've got sandpaper. I've got two different grits of sandpaper. We've got our 400 grit and our 120 grit. And then, of course, we've got our one inch fusion mineral paint brushes, um, which we love to use for this project. And then we have an exacto knife and some sawtooth hangers. So if you want to hang them on your wall, they're there for you to use as well. Um, some people just opt to put them on a shelf, um, which is a nice way to decorate your home too. Um, Fusion mineral paint, of course, is our paint of choice. We love these colors. Um, Azure and picket fence are the colors that we've picked for today's sign. Uh, all the paint colors, they have a beautiful color palette. Um, it's wonderful to use for all of our DIY projects and also meant for furniture refinishing too. But if you're not quite sure of tackling that project yet, um, sign making is a great start um, just to get used to the paint and how it works. Um, and we also put ours in squeeze bottles for our workshop. So that's what we're gonna be using today. So I just squeeze some paint on a paper plate. and grab the one inch brush. And I like to just start by painting the edges first. Just makes it really easy and clean so that it doesn't muck up your table. And you can see a little paint goes a long way. Just dab that paint on the edges. There 
go. It's kind of fun just to play with different colors. We picked a brighter color today. A lot of times I like to stick with just the muted colors, but today we're going to use a nice bright color of azure. Like it'll pop on the front door where we're going to be putting it. And I like to just do a nice thin coat. Don't need any clumps. It's super user friendly. If you've never worked with acrylic paints before, um, it is very similar to that. The difference between this fusion pink and, and a regular acrylic paint is that um, this paint is very durable. And it'll be fine outdoors just as it is. And you don't need to do a finish or anything. This is the paint will make it just durable in itself. And we're just going to let that dry. See, this paint has got really good coverage. And I think one coat is enough for this sign. You'll find on the lighter colors that you need to apply perhaps two coats. The paint dries super fast. And you don't need to wait too long, really, just a couple minutes. We have pre-painted ones, so I'm just going to grab the dry one so we don't have to just wait for that one. So this has got one coat on it as well, and it's a little bit rough. So after we paint on fresh pine, it raises the grain a little bit. So I'm just going to take my 400 grit sandpaper, and I'm just going to smooth it out. You don't need to go super hard, just really nice and soft over the top and you can see it doesn't affect the surface or the paint at all it just makes it nice and smooth and of course the more you stand off the more paint will come off so if you're looking for a distressed look then you can certainly take more off the edges and the 120 grit sandpaper is perfect for that and i'll show you after we apply the stencil so this is really smooth i'm just going to put that to the side and we have our stencil which I'm just gonna rub over top of the top of the stencil. And what that does is just make sure that, especially on this font, all of the centers of the S's, the A in the P there, that all of that, when we pull the backing off, that it stays in its integrity in one piece. So I'm just gonna flip this upside down and then I'm just gonna peel the corner and the black sticky side of the vinyl is going to stay on the table side. And you can see that all of my centers are in there great and there's nothing on the back. So I'm just going to slowly remove this. And just leave that sticky side up on the table. And then I'm going to take my sign. And this is going to be the most nerve wracking part, but really we try to make this simple as possible. So the stencil is the same size as the wood. And so you just line up the top and the edges with the wood, place it on the table upside down and then flip it over. And then just lightly rub the top. And if you're watching, feel free to make comments in the comment box too. You can comment with a yay if this looks really easy to you. Any questions for us, feel free to comment as well. We'd love your feedback or to help you with any questions with your sign making. And we'd love to know that you're watching too. You can let us know if you're an avid DIYer or if you're new to this. You can see I'm just removing the top, it's called transfer tape. And I'm removing that and all of my stencil is staying on the, on the wood. I'm just peeling this right off. And then this transfer tape just ends up being garbage. And now we're ready to paint our font color, which we've chosen Picket Fence. There you go. And as you can see, the sample jars of Picket Fence that are available, we've got a sample jar right here. Uh, super small. I love the sample jar for painting signs because one little jar goes a really, really long way. So you can do multiple projects. 
And these little sample jars we keep in stock in all of the colors, which is so much fun to play with. And so we've got our picket fence. It's the whitest white that they have. And really there's hardly any paint on my brush at all. This is called a dry brush technique. And then you just go over the lettering really lightly. And you wanna use less paint as possible so that you avoid any bleeding of the paint. So what that is is paint that would go underneath the stencil. Again, I'll just apply a little bit more. So I always say less is best. Just a little bit. And I dab in there. If you find it's not really going into the grooves, you can swirl, you can go left to right, up or down. It's pretty forgiving. And then I always just go over it a little bit more. And that would be my first coat. And you see that you've got some of that azure color going through. And I don't mind that actually. You could just leave it like that if you're looking for the rustic look. Um, if you're looking for a more solid look, which I'll show you, we'll just let this dry for a couple of minutes. Um, and we're happy to take any questions if you're live watching us. So this paint, um, to get a more solid coat on the white, we're gonna add two coats. And when it's dry to the touch, that's when you know when to add more. And when it's not coming off on your finger, like this was done with such a dry brush, you can see none is coming off on my finger. That's the teal from me painting the first coat. And again, I'm just gonna add a second coat, super easy. Nice and light. You know, tackling these projects sometimes can feel a little bit overwhelming because you don't know where to shop for these supplies or what exactly you need. So if you're tuning in and you stay to the end of this video, you'll see that there is a downloadable link for the step-by-step -step instructions with all the supplies that you need that you can shop for online at homeworksetc.ca. So I've applied the second coat and we're gonna just let that dry a couple minutes and then we'll move on to removing the lettering. So the stencil's just gonna come off. Uh, these are one-time use only stencils. So the vinyl is gonna just be used once. Um, the thing that I like about that is that there's no keeping a lot of stock. You just use it and discard of it afterwards. Um, you've got lots of different choices, again, of designs to choose from. And you can use different techniques and get as complicated as you want. But again, this is super easy, simple, two colors. And just another minute or so to dry. So you can see the coverage is pretty good with two coats. Um, if you're looking to do distressing, I've got uh, the 120 grit sandpaper. If you like more of a farmhouse look, more of a barn board look, you can add more distressing to it to sand. And this looks like it's already dry to the touch. So we're gonna remove the stencil. You just take one corner and just start peeling it. And now you're gonna notice that all of our centers of the sign, this of the decal is all on the wood still. See how easy that came off? Just super easy. And again, that's just gonna be garbage. And then I use the X-Acto knife. I just extend the blade a little bit and pu pull that underneath. We don't use any fancy tools here, just an X-Acto knife to help us peel this right off. And you just wanna be careful that you don't nick any of that fresh paint that you just applied. And if you do, that's okay too. You can just go back with a fine brush and just touch it up. And so I'm just going through the whole quote here just to remove any of the vinyl that was left behind. 
There you go. That is our sign making process. So you can see our sign turned out really nice. The lines are nice and crisp. There was no bleeding that happened. Again, um, our paint of choice is fusion mineral paint. Um, these beautiful colors on this spring day is going to be great when we put it on our wreath on our front door. <clears throat> um, if you want to join a community of women just like you who enjoy DIYing, you can join us on Facebook at homeworksetcetera.shop and the link is below as well. Every Thursday, we're going to be doing DIY videos, uh, tackling a different decor project. So if you're interested, please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell that's beside the subscribe button to get notification every Thursday to DIY with us at Homeworks Etc. Thanks for joining us. Bye.